Hello everybody, uh, we are starting with the genetic and with chapter 2 chromosome and cellular reproduction. This chapter focuses on cell reproduction and the particularly the mechanisms by which genetic information is transmitted from parental to daughter's new cells. So, uh, in during these recordings, I would like to focus uh, to the most important things in this chapter. I will not go through every single slide which you have posted on Blackboard. However, I will pinpoint the most important parts. Now, I divided this recording into parts. In this first part, we will discuss structure of chromosomes and cell cycle mitosis and mitosis. In second part, we will talk and discuss uh, sexual reproduction and meiosis. So talking about cellular reproduction, we have to take in account the differences between pro and eukaryotes, particularly those which uh, reflect in the transmission of genetic information in the way how the genetic information is passed from parents to daughter cells. Um, as you can see, or as you remember from your gen bio courses, there are two major differences. Also, there are many others, but two major. Firstly, as uh, the name indicates, prokaryotes do not possess nuclear membrane. As a matter of fact, they do not possess membrane-bound organelles, while eukaryotes has particularly compartmentalized structure uh, and the genetic information is enclosed in nuclear membrane. Uh, this has implication, as you will see later in the course, on the way how genes are expressed. Uh, in prokaryotes, you can have transcription starts, which is followed immediately by translation, while in eukaryotes, these two uh, mechanisms are separated, and we will talk later on about. Another large difference or huge difference between pro and eukaryotes is in the complexity of their genetic information of the DNA molecules. While in prokaryotes, most of them, they possess single uh, DNA molecule, most of them, not all. There are certain bacteria, remember, which have more than one chromosome. What, however, this chromosome in most bacteria is very simple, one molecule circular. In eukaryote, genetic information is localized on many linear chromosomes, and there is higher complexity in organization. The DNA is a package and a link was associated with histone protein, which you don't find in prokaryotes. Okay, remember, prokaryotes, they do have DNA linked to some simple proteins, but not histone. You find histone only in eukaryotes. So this complexity of DNA and the localization also afterwards reflects in the way how DNA rep is replicated, and basically that's what we will talk later on. Just I will not go into details, but reading the book, make sure that you remember that prokaryotes, there are two major groups eubacteria and archaea, go and check the differences between them. You, um, archaea are more similar to eukaryotes. They are in between of, uh, of uh, eubacteria and eukaryotic organisms. Okay, so let's just stress again that in prokaryotes, prokaryotes there is no compartmentalized cellular structures. So if you take bacterial cells, let's say this is bacteria, we have DNA chromosomes, which are usually circular, double-stranded. However, they are not separated from cytoplasma by nuclear membrane. The organelles which you can find in bacteria in the cytoplasma are only ribosomes, okay? They do not have membrane-bound Organelles. And as I mentioned before, they are made up of eubacteria and archaea. 
Now, as I mentioned before, bacteria do not possess histone in archaea. You can find small uh, histones which are not completely identical to eukaryote, but they are closer to the eukaryotic cell structure. So let's go. Most of our classes and most of the chapter is devoted to the eukaryotic cells. What are the major characteristics? Compartmentalization. It's a magic world which is linked to eukaryotes. We find higher level of organizations, organization of uh, organelles, organization of the nucleic acid, genetic information. Nuclear envelope separate chromosome DNA from cytoplasm. Transcription is separated from translation. Um, during transcription, when, when RNA is made, it has to be processed before being uh, transported into cytoplasm. So all this brings additional complexity to the regulation of gene expression. Another characteristic which you have to realize is that in eukaryotes, DNA is closely associated with histone. So this close and tight packaging of histone with DNA prevents access to DNA of transcription factors. So basically, while the histone are completely tightly packed with the DNA, there is no gene expression. So what happened before DNA replicates and before DNA is transcribing to RNA, this uh, complexing of histone of DNA has to be released. And we will talk later on how does it happen and how this regulatory mechanism contributes to gene expression and the transcription and enabling translation later on proceeds. So, up to now, we talk about pro and eukaryote. What are, what are the major characteristics? What about viruses? They are no prokaryotes, they are not eukaryotes. Basically, viruses are somewhere, nowhere. It's a funny expression, but uh, viruses are very simple structure consisting of nucleic acid, which can be DNA or RNA, viral protein code, and some viruses might have an envelope derived from whole cells. So, there are still discussion going on. Are viruses alive or not? There is no clear-cut answer. Viruses are strict intracellular parasite, so they can only replicate and behave as a live uh, organism if they are inside of cells. So there, is, there are particularities to viruses, and there are still discussion going on about viruses, whether they are alive, but where do they belong, and so on. For the genetic information, what I want you to remember, we will talk later on about viruses, that Viruses are particular from the point also that the genetic information can be encoded in RNA. We have viruses which have DNA as genetic material, but we have also viruses which has RNA as a genetic material. So that's very peculiar, okay? Okay, so we talk about the introductory thing. So I hope that it's clear the difference between pro and eukaryotic cells. Um, now let's talk about cell reproduction. How cell divide? How cell reproduce? Before we start to talk about cell reproduction in prokaryote, let's see what is important or what is required in order that cellular reproduction or cellular division is successful. First, when cell reproduced, let's talk about, uh, let's imagine um, cell in your, let's say, uh, your um, epidermal cells. 
you go out, you go somewhere and you cut yourself. So there are da- cells which are damaged and die. They need to be reply, uh, replaced by new cells. So how the cells should be made? You want to replace them by exactly the same cell as was previous cells. You don't want to replace them with different cells. So in order to replace cells by the same to create clone, Basically, you have to properly divide genetic information and having clone, meaning having the same cell as a parental cells. So in order that these daughter cells have the same genetic information, in that parental cells, before it divides, it has to copy genetic information that instead of one copy, it has two copies, which afterwards they can be separated or they must be separated into daughter cells, okay? So you have one copy of genetic information. So before cell division, first requirement is that the genetic information is copied and we will go through cell cycle and see how it happens. Second one is that this copied information must be separated and third following separation of genetic information, cell must divide. Now, to assure the three steps, eukaryotic cell develop very complex mechanisms of mitosis by which they actually divide genetic information. In prokaryotic cells, which is outlined here, uh, the mechanism is much more simple. The prokaryotic cells reproduce by simple mechanism of um, binary fission. This actually uh, simple division is once you consider that bacteria has circular chromosome, which is double-stranded DNA, and each chromosome has origin of replication. So within origin of replication is a place when DNA is hard to replicate. So what happened in prokaryotic cells, the origin of replication is place when DNA is hard to synthesize. So each of this DNA strand would serve as a copy for new DNA. So new DNA is synthesized. Um, the origins, new origin, start to anchor here to opposite pole of the cells and basically the DNA is attracted, is divided. As the DNA newly old and new strand of DNA is divided, basically the cell divide as well and the each one has the same copy of DNA. Because basically let's t- let's try to do it this way. Um, if we actually if you if you consider blue as the original strand and red one a new strand, what we will finish with would be two molecules of bacteria, which one would have, the, each one would have new strand, and of course, each one would also have the old one. So these two, one will go to one cell, another will go to another cell. So this is very simple prokaryotic cell reproduction. Now, we go in next slide to eukaryotic uh, cell reproduction or division, which is much more common. Okay, so in eukaryotic cells, do you recall we mentioned that eukaryotic chromosomes are linear and most of eukaryotic cells have multiple number of chromosomes. Now, this is very important because number of chromosomes is characteristic for each species. Let's say human, you see here's a karyotype of the humans. Oops, sorry. So, in humans, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, meaning 46 chromosomes. Uh, fruit flies has 8 chromosomes. So, each species has different number of chromosomes, which is characteristic. Now, let's step back a little bit. We talk about chromosome. So, what is chromosome? So, chromosome is characterized or defined as thread-like molecule which copy hereditary information. 
Chromosome, you can also define it as an organized package, chromatin, which consists of DNA and proteins. Now, chromosomes, chromosome consists of specific structure, and in most species, in eukaryotic species, they exist in homologous pair. Um, homologous pair, what does it mean? Let's say in human, we have 46 chromosomes, which come in two pairs. What does it mean? We get one set or one set of chromosomes from our mother and one set from our father. So, it's why they form a pair, because we receive them from both parents. So, 46, if we have two pair, we talk about diploid number. One pair, let's say 23 chromosome, is a haploid number. Okay? So, homologous pair, what does it mean? They are alike. Homologous pair, you see here pair 1, pair 2, pair 3, and so on, up to uh, sex chromosome, which are here. Uh, 22 pair in humans are autosome. Non-sex chromosomes are called autosomes. Autosome pair have the same structure, the same size, and carry the same information, genetic information. So if you we take, let's say, one pair of chromosomes um, on one location on each chromosome on the same location which is called locus we have the same gene let's say this is gene for color so it is a color of the flower this gene is always on the same locus however it can dif differ it can have two different form, two different allele. It can be either dominant or recessive. However, it is the same gene. Okay, so let's uh, review homologous pair, diploid cell, and haploid cells. So keep in mind that in eukaryotic cells, Ploidity actually refer to how many sets of chromosomes cell possess. If cell is diploid, it has two sets. If it's haploid, it has one set. So now let's talk a little bit about chromosome structure. Chromosome, keep in mind, chromosome can consist either as a one DNA molecule or two DNA molecule, okay? Either this one is one chromosome and this one is one chromosome as well. What is the difference? The chromosome, one chromosome, which is here, which equals one DNA molecule, is so-called non-replicated chromosome, which you usually find in G1 phase of cell cycle, which we will talk about. Um, chromosome here consists of two DNA molecules and its chromosome after replication, after S phase when DNA replicated. Replication, you remember, before cell divide, it has to replicate genetic material. So this is chromosome after replication of genetic material, okay? So both are chromosomes. Now, what are the three most important structure that chromosome has to possess in order to be functional? Centromere, telomere, and origin of replication. Origin of replication, it's a site on chromosomes where DNA synthesis starts. If you mutate ORI or origin of replication, DNA would not be able to initiate synthesis. Okay? Centromere. Centromere is a side, a constricted side of chromosome, which is a part of chromosome where the kinetochore assembles. 
kinetochore is very important. Assembly of kinetochore is a, like base for spindle microtubule attachment. Spindle microtubules are important for the separation of uh, chromatid during mitosis and meiosis. Now, centromere has another function. A centromere, how you can actually count chromosomes? This is one chromosome says you count chromosome not by number of DNA molecule but by number of centromere. One chromosome, one centromere, one chromosome, one centromere. Now, uh, and other things, based on the position of centromere on chromosome, you can distinguish four different types of chromosome. Metacentric, submetacentric, acrocentric, and telocentric. Basically, telocentric chromosomes we don't find in humans, but you can find them, for example, in mice model and so on. The last functional structure which chromosome requires to have in order to function properly is telomere. Telomeres are at the end of chromosomes, and telomeres protect chromosomes, protects end of chromosomes. Telomeres can be compared to those little cap you have on your um, shoelaces. Imagine if you take off that cap from shoelaces, if you still wear them, what would happen? The shoelace would completely dis disintegrate, it would fall apart. The same would happen with chromosome. If you mutate chromosome, or after many replication, when telomere is too short, the chromosome would not be functional, it would have sticky ends, it would not uh, function properly. We will talk a little bit more about telomere when we will talk about the structure of DNA and DNA replication. Just remember for now the three important structures that functional chromosome has to have. Now let's talk about cell cycle. Cell cycle is compared to life story of cells. It is a critical because during cell cycle, uh, basically genetic instructions are passed from, from one cell to the new daughter cells. And cell cycle in eukaryotes is highly regulated process. And there are two major phases. M phase here, this is M phase, and interphase. Those are two major phases. M phase comprises of mitosis where actually genetic material is divided and cytokinases where the cellular cytoplasma is divided. Interphase comprises three basic steps. G1 phase or GAP1, where cell grows, there is high protein synthesis, and uh, synthesis grow, dif grows differentiation. Certain cells actually can exit G1 and enter G0 phase, non-dividing phase, and they stay, they stay in non-dividing phase for certain time. Sometimes it might last very long time. Let's consider neurons. Neurons are one cells which spend most of their life in G0 phase. However, most of the cells divide and basically division means that before cell divide here, they have to replicate their genetic material and they do it in S phase. So remember, DNA is replicated during interphase, during S phase here. Um, what define whether actually cell would di divide, uh, whether cell would actually synthesize DNA? Cell responds to extracellular and intracellular signals. If signal, if cell receives signal that it needs to replicate, it would proceed through G1 to S phase checkpoints. These checkpoints, you will see there are several checkpoints. G1 to S checkpoints assures that all proteins and all molecules necessary for DNA replication, as well as 
that DNA is not damaged and is properly assembled. So one cell pass, G1S phase, it is committed to division. Okay, so what happened in S phase? So if we go to actually G1 phase, let's see what would be chromosome here. We have two chromosomes, okay, from mother and from father. This is another chromosome pair. Let's say this two chromosome pair. Each of these chromosomes, these are two homologous chromosomes, each is made of one molecule of DNA equals one chromatid. What is the difference between DNA and chromatid? DNA is a pure DNA molecule. Chromatid refers to DNA which is assembled with proteins, histones. Okay. Now, what happened with this molecule during S phase? During S phase, each of this molecule DNA would replicate. So each of this chromosome now will consist of two molecules of DNA. You see, we can count it by centromere. So once cells replicate all DNA material in S phase, it proceeds to G2 phase. G2 phase is actually preparation for division for M phase. So all proteins, enzymes necessary for mitosis are synthesized in G2. And in order to assure that everything is properly assembled, synthesized, that there is no DNA damage, cell has to pass G2M checkpoints. Once it passes G2M points, it starts mitosis. Remember, mitosis is the division of genetic information and it is followed by cytokinases, which is division of cytoplasm. Actually, um, you can watch, you have to, not you can, you have to watch animation uh, what, cell cycle and mitosis on your launch pad. And it will explain you in much more and better detail what happens when there are defects in certain cell cycle mechanisms, okay? Okay, so let's talk now about mitosis. First part of the M phase, during which the genetic material, meaning DNA, chromatids are separated. Uh, mitosis proceed in uh, five different phases. Prophase, prometaphase, telophase, anaphase, and Sorry, um, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Okay, now how does cell assure that each daughter cells here receive the same genetic information as the original parental cell had? Uh, to understand how the chromatids are divided, I strongly advise you read the introductory story, which is a um, blind man riddle. It will tell you very interestingly how actually two blind men can divine a pair of socks. And exactly the same principle, the same mechanism cell used to divide chromatids. So, I will not go in detail what happened during prophase, metaphase, and so on. What you have to realize is that, uh, basically, chromosomes align. Firstly, chromosomes have to attach to spindles, to, um, to tubular spindle, which attaches to kinetochore. Now, this attachment is enabled, firstly, by dissolving the nucleus and by condensation of chromosomes. And what happens is this attachment of tubular spindle to kinetochore actually assures that the chromosomes are aligned in metaphase place. Now, during this alignment, there is so-called spindle assembly checkpoints. 
Spindle assembly checkpoints make sure that each chromosome, each centromere, each chromatid is actually attached to proper, proper tubular spindle. That one side, one chromatid is attached to um, tubule coming from one uh, center, another to another. So this proper alignment and attachment to the um, to the spindle tubules is important in order that cell pass spindle assembly checkpoints. Now I would point also your attention to alignment of the chromosomes in metaphase plate because it's, it will be different in meiosis. So here all chromosomes align in one metaphase plate which afterwards when the spindle start to shorten, actually, the same way as the two socks in a pair are pulled together and broken, the, that middle string is broken here, the, the centrum or the cohesin which is holding the chromatid together is disassembled and chromatid are actually separated. And afterwards, basically, each cells the nuclear membrane reassemble and each cell will get the same number of chromosomes and the same identical genetic information as maternal cells. So basically when you start here, if we go to prophase and prometaphase, recall that before coming to M phase, DNA was already replicated. So here each chromosome consists of two chromatid, okay? Now what happened here is these two chromatid are actually separated and here in anaphase each of these chromatid is pulled on one side of the cells which means that after mitosis cell would have so-called non-replicated chromosome where one chromosome equals to one chromatid, one DNA. So now let's talk what are the genetic consequences of consequences of cell cycle and mitosis. First and most important, mitosis produces clones, produces cells which are identical, which are identical to each other and identical to parental cells. And basically, this has, these cells, newly formed cells, have full, complete number chromosomes. So if maternal cells was deployed, every daughter cell will have again deployed number of chromosomes. So mitosis produces clone, identical clone with the same ploidity. So 2n, so if we go to mitosis, 2n produces 2n cells, deployed to deployed. If maternal cells, let's say, if you are uh, um, muscle cells, well, that's not a very good example because they do not replicate, but let's say your epidermal cells. Your epidermal cells has 46 chromosomes before, and if it replicates two epidermal cells, each one would have 46 chromosomes, and they would be identical, okay? Now, this is, this refer to genetic material. Uh, for M phase, you recall, is mitosis and cytokinesis. During cytokinesis, the cytoplasm divide, and each cell can get approximately half of the cytoplasm of the content of parental cells. That's why, even so, it doesn't apply always. It's not always um, proper half, but it is approximately half. So, each cells end up with a smaller number of organelles and molecules, so it's why during G1 phase it has to grow, it has to have high protein synthesis. Okay, so remember, mitosis produces identical cell to parental cell, it produces clones. 
Now, the, the last thing I would like to go over is relationship between chromosomes, chromatid, and DNA molecule. I know sometimes it is confusing. So, we start from DNA molecule. So, DNA molecule is double helix, and we will talk about the structure. It's where the genetic information is encoded and is, a base, is composed of the nucleotides. Now, DNA plus proteins form chromatid. So, one DNA equals one chromatid. Now, how relate chromatid and chromosomes? Chromosomes are highly packed, organized, and condensed chromatids. Now, chromosomes can be composed of one chromatid or one molecule of DNA. We call, we call them non-replicated chromosome. You find them in cells after M phase during G1 phase. One cell comet to re replication and undergoes S phase DNA replication. We have replicated chromosomes where each chromosome consists of two molecules of DNA. Okay? And basically, they again separate during anaphase, so these two chromatids separate and assure that actually each cell, daughter cell, gets equally the same number of genetic material. So how do you count chromosome? Again, you count them by centromere. You count centromere. One centromere, one chromosome. So if you look, uh, let's see here. Here's a cell has one, two, three, four chromosomes, two pairs, okay? One from mother, one from father. During prophase and metaphase, it still have four chromosomes. However, in anaphase, chromatids separate. Each one of them has own centromere, so we will have eight chromosomes because the nucleus and cell didn't divide. Once the nucleus and cell divide, you end up again to four. Number four of chromosomes. So. I hope this was helpful. Uh, the videos on Launchpad would explain, will explain all the mechanisms in much more detail. So let's go to the second recording, which will be on sex reproduction, sexual reproduction, and meiosis.